Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Good morning and a warm welcome to the communities of Robert Tabernacle United Reformed Church and Brockworth Free Church sharing together in worship. And Barbara is going to call us to worship with some gentle words from a psalm. May your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion come to me that I may live for your law is my delight. Thank you, Barbara. We're going to sing this morning. Uh, morning has broken, uh, after which Jill will lead us in prayer. Broken like the first morning, blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall sounded from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, strong in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, even so plain. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. Let us pray. Light and strength of my heart, like shining light are your words, O God, lighting the dark, scattering fears, showing the path, pointing the way. As I travel on shadowy ground, my lamp and light, I praise you. There are traps and snares in the world, O God, drawing us in, bringing us down hurting, harming, hindering. As I walk across uneven land, my guard and guide, I praise you. As laughter and gladness is your truth, O God, lifting our hearts, enfolding us with love, turning us towards goodness, teaching us to trust with a heart that rejoices in you pulse and power from my journey. I praise you. Amen. Now James will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, James, for leading us in prayer. And it's time for two of our readers, for Angelo and Pat, to take us uh, into the letter to the Romans and to the Gospel of Matthew. Life through the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. 
And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Amen. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him and he got into the boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants, while other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Well, the prayer handbook sometimes takes us to familiar places. One of the dangers is that we simply apply our old thinking to the new time. When Jesus asked people to become like children, he wants us to enter into the stories as a new experience. In his parables, Jesus quite remarkably embeds wisdom in the secular and the sacred. And this, the parable of the sower, is one of those times to his listeners, the secular has much appeal to some and the sacred has appeal to others. And he's trying to excite the two to come together, ensuring that his audience is interested in what he has to say. What he has to say is important because he shares over and over again based on the experience of Elijah that it's not always in the amazing and the spectacular that you might hear God but it is in the stillness and the quietness where the voice speaks. God is a whisperer. The world fights for your attention. It points out if you're someone we'll know. Oh yeah we'll know if you're someone by your car, your house, your wealth, your status. Whereas God simply sticks with you and entrusts you with the word that is gospel to bring that word to the good soil where it will grow. Now, if you're a statistician reading this parable, you'll argue that 75% of what you will do will be a failure. And we'll look at where the seed falls soon. But Jesus says, in the 25% where growth is possible, you'll encounter more than you could ever imagine. Jesus, in a time when the Roman Empire is regularly knocking seven bells out of his people, shares that who wins or loses immediately is not as important as what it grows over time. In the Christian community, we are all sowers. This is the problem with discipleship. And it depends on uh, and demands an amazing view of equality. We recognise those called to serve in the role of Minister of Word and Sacrament. But it's true, you know, that 50% will stand down after about five years. 40% of ministers will have thought of quitting in the last year, not because of congregations, but because of the hardness of the task. 
So Jesus uses this parable because we are to put the gospel about freely. And some will fall by the roadside and be trampled upon. And the birds will come and eat the open seed. But God is saying, I want you to love. And we know by life experience, every bit as much as those who were listening on that day, that love has a price. If we were only to plant in good ground, we would save a lot of seed, but miss one heck of a lot of opportunities. You don't know where the seed will take root. Sowing to everybody is not quoting Leviticus. Every time you see a sin you can name. Love is what we're to sow. Love of God that is echoed wonderfully in John 3.16. But for disciples, the going is often tough. John 6.66 6, uh, found lots of followers of Jesus saying, we're off. We're off. Doesn't do it for us. So we're leaving. And sometimes in church, I have to say, if you've never thought about leaving, you may not really have thought about staying. This is a gospel adventure. And in it, there are a number of we don't knows. And Matthew 5.10 can show us how hard it is to stick with the walk. Blessed are those who are persecuted, it says. Well, four kinds of soul. The next uh, refers very specifically to the soil Jesus and his listeners were most familiar with. Palestinian soil can have a very thin layer over limestone rock. The seed germinates, cannot put down roots and hence it wilts. But the next kind of soil is good soil, but good soil allows bad things to grow as well as the good things. Weeding is a never ending job. And I don't know about you, but sometimes my ham fistedness has me pulling up a good young plant along with the weeds. And that can be some people's experience. But the weeds of the world grab attention in the way God doesn't. They choke faith and are sometimes instrumental in shattering hope. Money now, wealth now, pain for the next generation and the one after that. But how wonderful it is when that word takes root and grows. And Jesus makes it clear it won't all grow the same. And for me, that offers an opportunity to cherish the small church and the mega church. Jesus wants the faithful to love. And he wants the community that is Christian to shine with love. For him, the living word. And in being a beacon of hope for the dispossessed, the bruised, the hurting folk of our community, our estate, our town, our city. We're to welcome with love those who want to grow, even when they grow quicker than we do. Thanks be to God. Amen. This has been quite a difficult time, the time of lockdown. One of the highlights for me, though, has been the way in which our music group, uh, led particularly by Jill Malcolm, uh, has brought together music. It's done in the most amazing way. People receive a little track in their own home, they sing along, and Jill then puts it all together. And so we're going to hopefully join together in singing Father I Place Into Your Hands. Father I place into your hands the things that I can do. Father I place into your hands the times that I me through. Father I place into your hands the way that I should go. into your hands my friends and family father i place into your hands the things that trouble me father i place into your hands the person i would be for i know i always can trust you father we love to see your face we love to hear your voice father we love to
Prayer of Intercession Though we are scattered, we are united in spirit, so let us pray. God of all hopefulness, at a time when hope is hard to find, we pray for your guiding light to lead us to a hopeful dawn. The world is in chaos, half a million dead from a virus that appears to be unstoppable, economies in tatters, job losses in the tens of thousands, governments struggling to cope, and admit this terrible pandemic that most of the time dominates every new cycle. Injustice, violence and starvation still moves through the world. Refugees still search for a safe haven. The hungry still scavenge for food. The dispossessed still hope for justice. And the victims of war still dream of peace. God of compassion, you feel the pain of those who hurt. You cry with those near to breaking. You share the load of those most heavily burdened. You are the friend of those most alone and listen to those who are rendered voiceless. We lift up to you our world in all its pain, our country trying to navigate a new normal, our church trying to find the safest way to reopen our buildings, our families, our friends and all those we love and cannot hold. God of all hopefulness, send your comfort, your peace and your calming presence to those without hope, for you will guide us all to a hopeful dawn. Amen. Now let us all join together in singing all I once held dear. this morning and as we go into the week let's be prepared to sow those seeds let's do those small acts of kindness those acts of love where we bring the blessing of God to the people around us God who is with us Father Son and Holy Spirit and stays with us now and evermore Amen <laughs> 